It's another one horn production! just know me you know they kind of see me as a nice guy the guy that they play around with and stuff and they they haven't seen the other side of me the serious intense side of me the side of me that likes to fight see when i fight i enjoy pain i like to get hit that's the the no holds barred it's a mixed martial arts it, this this allows people from the different arts to compete against each other to, to find out which is more effective the benefit of a cage is that it attracts people when you hear the word cage or cage brawl or something like that or cage fighting it invokes an image of animals in a cage or two pit bulls in a, in a caged area the taste and the sight of blood like that it just it, it it excites me when i got my nose broke i thought that was one of the greatest things ever the, the flow of blood just it excited me when the fight was done i, I walked away from that and just it, it was it was pure ecstasy for me i mean that was that was fun to see a lot of um, good athletes that are going to go out and give it their best. Before they go into a match, you have to, of course, you have to have that mindset that you're going out there to freaking just destroy this individual. It allows you to see a boxer fight a, a wrestler or the jiu-jitsu guy fight the, the kickboxer, the, the grapplers fighting the strikers. Well, I got respect for anybody, anybody that's going to step up into a cage, whether it's my opponent or anybody else. I got a, I got a lot of respect for all the guys that are stepping up here tonight. Any Joe Sixpack can sit back on a couch, pop a beer, and talk about what he can do or what he will do. But it takes a certain kind of man with balls the size of boulders to step up there, step into a cage, have the door shut behind you, and mano a mano, go at it. That's not the average Joe Sixpack. That's the top 10%, maybe the top 5%. They say the cream rises to the top. You got some of the cream in here tonight. The NHB has, has become an art itself. It's a... Uh, it's 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 now a style itself it's a it's a, it's a total package it's a complete martial art so going to some of the fights and seeing seeing some of the negativities in the fights i went through and i just wasn't satisfied with uh, the construction of the fight itself and the effort that people put into it and i thought you know me and carl are both really professional guys i thought we could put it together and make it do it the right way we want to see the sport grow and take off the right way so we figured we'd do it ourselves 
We've been planning this for about three months. I'd say we probably have about two, good two and a half months of work on this fight. We made an agreement with each other that we won't do any shows of a lesser caliber than this one. Everyone will be progressed up upwards. The fact that me and Carl fight ourselves and tied into the fighting community, we know a lot of fighters. You know, every fighter knows 10 other fighters. So we were able to pull some really high caliber fighters. We've had people that called and asked us to fight and we turned them down just because we wanted to have a really good show this time. It's going to be NHB, no holes bar fighting. We're going to have two contestants that are going to come inside the cage. The gentlemen are going to be doing their best to either submit or knock out their opponent within a given time limit for this fight. There's a few rules, there's not many, of what you cannot do. Pretty much everything goes, okay, no groin strikes, no headbutts, no fish hooking, none of this, none of this, no eye gouging, anything like that. Striking to the spine, what do we mean by that? You cannot intentionally strike, elbow strike or punch to the base of the neck, with a punch or elbow, and you cannot to the small of the spine, for obvious reasons. Okay, that does not include the toxins. If someone's on their back and have their guard on somebody and somebody's above them, he can knee the toxins. That's considered legal, okay? What we mean by the spine is if someone shoots in and we're here, I can't do this, okay? I'm not going to elbow the spine. I'm not going to strike the spine. Spine, I mean basically and pretty much go around this area here. No intentional strikes to the knees. If I'm leg kicking, I want to shoot for that common coronial. I do not want to try to blow out his knee. I realize mistakes happen, and that can be an individual thing, okay? We'll play that by ear. Heel hooks are legal. You can also strike while the person's on the ground, whether you're on top or on bottom. A standing fighter can strike a laying fighter or a fighter who's on all fours. Do you require us to wear rallies? Yes. We will be wearing gloves, we will be wearing cups, and we will be wearing mouthpieces. Okay? No Vaseline on your body, no oil on your body, no KY gel. It can't be all slippery, okay? Why do you put KY? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people are asking me, what criteria are we going to use to stop a fight? My criteria is very simple. If you cannot defend yourself or appear to me that you cannot defend yourself and are basically in another world, I'm going to stop the fight. Look, if you're on the ground, if you're laying on your back and he's monitoring on you and he's pounding you and you're not responding, I will stop the fight. Next thing, stalling. Basically, somebody's trying to hold on to a guard and not do anything else, I will stand you back up. The cage, you can grab the cage, but you cannot use the cage to aid in a submission. If I'm grabbing the cage, I cannot use the cage for leverage to knee my guy or hit my guy. Uh, one of the good things for a cage with this kind of fighting, however, is it is used as a tool of fighting, number one. You can uh, fight up against it. And the likelihood of falling out of a cage is a lot less than when you're in a ring. You can be tossed out of a ring a lot more quickly. I've seen some people go over cages, but depending on the height, it usually doesn't happen. Do not use the cage to stall. If you guys here and you're just holding on here and you're not doing anything, I will stop you and I will put you back in the center. I'll get you off the cage. Well, the floor, uh, while it's basically a, a a one inch thick mat laid over plywood. It's not as hard as you think. It, it sounds like it. it. It is somewhat padded. When you're thrown up against the cage, obviously it's different when you're against the fence uh, rather than one of the posts. It, it can hurt, but they're all padded as well. And when you're in the middle of a uh, about, you're not thinking about that. Those are things that you may uh, you discover the next day. Yeah? You, you must have a corner man. I don't care if you have one or two, but you must have a corner man and he must have a towel. Corner man, be very cognizant of your people. I don't see you people fight every day. You probably do. You know what their abilities are and you know what, what type of punishment they can take. Some people in here have harder heads than others. What I want you to do, I want you to really watch your fighter. If he's in that much trouble, throw in the towel. We'll be recognized and we will stop the fight, okay? Understand the pride thing, we, we know that, okay, but we want to be safe. As Chad said, this is an extremely controversial sport and we want to give it a very good air. We want everybody in here to come out of here unscathed, basically. Being there's no prize money involved. What drives you to do this type of fighting? I just enjoy fighting. Um, it's about the only thing. Hopefully, maybe one day a pro contract. What kind of training do you have there? Take Shinokai, weight lift, uh, sprint, and work out on a bag. How many fights have you been in? This is my third fight. Have you ever sustained any type of injury? No. Do you have any concern of if the fight goes to the ground? Hopefully it won't go that far, but if so, I'm, I'll have learned.
learned a few tricks, not many, so hoping it keeps uh, standing. We've been told by a lot of the trainers that uh, it's good not to have any kind of sexual activity like three weeks before the fight. Have you heard that before? Or? I've heard it, but... Uh, Do you practice that? You see my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's tough to say no. It's tough to say no. How do you feel about that? Anything you could say to your opponent, what would you like to say? I prayed, I hope he prayed. Uh, hopefully, we have a good, clean match. Uh, none of us gets hurt. My towel man threw in the, I mean, my corner man threw in the towel on me. Chad had me in a key lock, which should have made me tap out. I rolled out of it as the towel was being thrown in. Chad or I didn't know the towel was thrown, so we went to keep with the fight. The ref uh, stopped us, said it's over with, and we like, none of us said we didn't tap out, and we just wanted to continue to fight, but it was over, you know. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mary, Louisiana. Oval Sports and Entertainment, No Cellos, present Reality Combat! Is there anything that you want to do this time that you, you, what you didn't do last time or something you didn't want to do this time? Um, not get the towel thrown in on me this time. You didn't like that last time? No, I didn't like that at all. Do you think uh, Mike's a better fighter this, this time? Is he, a month, is he one month better? Yes, I feel like he's one month better. He's been training harder this time. Did you do anything differently for this fight compared to last fight? More praying. <laughs> more praying? Yeah, more praying. Have you been following the three-week rule we asked you about? Nah. <laughs> no, I haven't been following the three-week rule. <laughs> Oh. Any advice you have for your opponent? Good luck. Uh, God be with both of us. Hope we, uh, none of us get hurt, have a safe, clean fight. I don't want to say nothing mean to him, you know, because you know, I'm not mad at him. We just support and shit. This is my opportunity to let everybody know there's a new face on the stage. He's me, and I'm here for real. If you step in the ring with me, be prepared for pain. Come up with a name for yourself yet? I'm just going with what they call me on the streets all my years as a cop. They call me the Terminator, because nothing ever stopped me. His opponent, Mike Kennedy, six foot four, 215 pounds. This is the to issue rule, jiu-jitsu and judo. And now, as promised, the no holds barred, full contact fight! What do you have to say to people who have a negative judgment about this sport? Uh, I, I would say they don't have a very good understanding of the sport. Both athletes, they're out there just testing each other's skills, and uh, the better man is going to win. First fight of the evening. This will be a submission fight. A submission fight. <laughs> 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 For those of you not familiar with submission, this will have no strengths.
was literally on, one round, but we're going to have an overtime tonight for this one. Let's hear from Matthias Meister and Mike Pavernostro at the end of round one. stick to freestyle, just keep it real simple. I'm a deckhand. Uh, we work on a river, we tie up grain barges with wires, that's about it. What made you want to get into martial arts at all? My dad actually took me to a karate class when I was, I think like 13 or 14, because uh, I was getting in trouble a lot. I got taken out maybe like nine months, retaliating on the bullies. I went back in when I was in high school. That's when I started taking judo. Any kind of grappling, it's really hard to find dedicated people. And a lot of people who were driving me were getting hurt and they wouldn't go no more. I train with other people. I train with Myron Godet out of Metairie, and he's really good. He helps me. Ray Tortorico, I train with him a lot. He's my best sparring partner and everything. Me and Ray, we go everywhere together. We fight together, train together. I think me and Ray make a pretty good team. Second fighter entering the cage. and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all the arts, but I like it, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. I've been doing it three and a half years. I got started by going to one of the local shows in New Orleans and uh, kind of told myself that, you know, that's something I, want, I would like to do, something I thought I would be good at. And uh, a month later, I, I was in it. Melhor tem lutadores vale tudo no Brasil. Yeah, he says it's, it's, it's going on almost everywhere now. You've got it here in the United States, you've got it in Europe, but it, it started in Brazil about 75, 80 years ago, and he still, he still feels that the Brazilians have the, the slight edge. Still got a lot of the secrets coming out of there. I don't believe in it. it. When it started, they got the good rap because of the Gracies. Now, it would be a different story. Every, everyone's mixed martial arts. No guy can just stand up there and punch, and no guy just grapples.
uh, he was weighing in. He was, he was much larger than I was, uh, upper body. Him being a Brazilian, he's going to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu and be uh, a lot better than I, I felt that I was going to be on the ground, a lot more effective. So I decided to do my best and make him play my game, which is a kicking and stomping and uh, striking game. What will determine whether or not you give someone more points than, than this point? Well, let's say somebody, I see them, like they're continually punching on their feet and the other guy is just trying to dock or if they're on the ground, somebody's more trying to just hold the guy as opposed to actually working for submissions and trying to finish the fight. To me, that's the most important thing is to try to win the fight and win it quickly. Match, but it wasn't. I looked to have to get on the ground and struggle to get up. It didn't happen at all. The judges have ruled a unanimous 3-0 decision for New Orleans, Louisiana's After we got out the, out the ring and we was in the back and I was getting dressed as I started to make out a couple things he was saying, he was calling me a disrespectful fighter and uh, challenging me and he was taunting me to, to fight him in the back and everything was done already. It was already decided in the ring, so I had nothing more to prove. Mississippi. Yeah. This is the 
Seahawks on it. The Seahawks stand six foot one inches tall. There's the other 15 pounds. He's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. His best support is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And now, another hold for the Bro Contact Fight Club. who's going to stop the fight at the first sight of blood or something like that because I've been out there before and, and you know you may get a little little nick on your head and it may it may bleed a lot but you're actually not hurt and I've been, I've been there and I know how much the desire is to win with these guys so don't look for me to have any necessarily breaking up with a fight way early or anything like that. safety involved with this sport than there is with anything else out there. There have been over 500 deaths in boxing in the last 100 years. So there's only been one documented death. So I definitely say it's a lot safer than people believe it to be. Don't look for blood. Look for real techniques. Look for two trained athletes who don't want to make mistakes. So you might not see them taking a lot of chances. And just enjoy the fight. Robbie Newman stands 5 foot 10, weighs 185 pounds. He's from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. His discipline is freestyle jujitsu. They both wear black trunks. Robbie Newman is wearing footgear.
It's gonna bleed one more time. You get popped there, dude. You got like two stitches right there. Try one more. Yeah. Try one? Okay. Starts bleeding again. I'm gonna call it. All right. Get, just, just let me wide, okay? If you're on the ground, if you're laying on your back, and he's monitoring on you, and he's pounding you, and you're not responding, I will stop the fight. Don't look for blood. Look for real techniques. Look for two trained athletes who don't want to make mistakes, so you might not see them taking a lot of chances. He felt very strong. He got on top of me, hit him with them elbows, and split me. You gonna come back and fight again? I don't know. This was supposed to be my last fight. I don't know. We'll see. Cool. Uh, you know, you get the combatants that come in here, and hey, bleeding is part of the sport. It, it happens, and we all accept that, and we all know that. You know, sometimes the fighters get together, and nobody sheds any blood. It, it ends up being technique, which is still a good fight. But if uh, you know, blood and violence is, is your forte, and that's what you want, keep watching. speak to them they say that they don't want to get too bulky because they're afraid it's going to slow them down in the cage i myself 
since I first stepped into the cage, I've slimmed down. Probably bulked up strength and muscle-wise. My strength is, is way up. I'm faster when I move. And sometimes with the extra bulk, the other extra muscle mass, if it's necessary, you can take more of a pounding because you got more thickness to you. I'm too old now, but... Uh, How old are you? 34. I'm supposedly one of the older guys on the circuit. John Accardo stands 5'7", weighs 215 pounds from Mary, Louisiana. His discipline is freestyle. His opponent, Dustin Holcomb, stands five foot nine, weighs 220 pounds. From coming to Louisiana, he is a wrestler. Once again, this is Pancras. There will be no strikes to the face, no facial strikes. Submission guillotine choke two minutes into the fight. Dustin Holcomb! Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our fighters. The appeal uh, to me and to most people that I that I know that enjoy the sport as uh, the totality of it. It is one of the oldest sports known to man, it dates back as far as we go back. And it is uh, the sportsmanship as much as anything. I've, I've witnessed more acts of uh, good positive sportsmanship in this sport than I have in any other sport.
out at our decision. With six seconds remaining in the round, winner by technical knockout, Jason Gaskin! What gets you mind right when you walk in the cage? I gotta get myself ready because I'm, like I said, I'm pretty much a nice guy. I got turned from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde. So usually it goes through my mind. I think back when I was a kid and all the bullies used to pick on me for the way I look. That's the person on the other side of the ring. I don't see their face. I see, I see all the nice little bullies. Probably my worst performance I ever had. I didn't train for that fight. My opponent, it, he was really strong. I think I did okay at the beginning. I came out throwing good strikes and I was connecting, but uh, he managed to take me to the ground. I got an arm bar and where I messed up in the fight is I didn't snap the arm bar. I just kind of, I didn't, I don't know, I wasn't mean enough, I guess, because I, I didn't try to break his arm. I figured he'd submit. He didn't. He powered out of it, slammed me on the ground, got me in the cage and elbowed me. I don't know how many times. I was out pretty quick, but he elbowed me a lot. What's your name? Caroline Benick. Caroline, what are you doing here tonight? I am hopefully going to beat up another girl. Really? Yeah. You seem real happy when you say that. Does that make you excited? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> personal, my personal opinion on that is, you know, if they want to do it, you know, I'm all for it, you know, providing that they don't start doing like they've done in boxing and a couple things now where they pit men against women. I, I, I just don't think that that's, that that's right. The, the pure strength advantage that most men have uh, over women, I think he eventually would win that out. Um, I, I mean, but if the, if the women want to get in here and, and, and fight each other, why not? We even actually have two uh, females that are going to be doing a submission match. There'll be no striking, but they're going to be doing a submission match. We just uh, threw that in at the last minute. We have one girl that's been trying to get a submission match since we've started promoting this fight, and it's been hard to find one for her, but uh, just actually last night we found a girl that was willing to come down and do a submission match with her. I started off doing kickboxing, and I tried it, loved it, and I've been with it ever since. The, the sport, it doesn't seem unfeminine to me. It is male-dominated, but why should women not be able to fight because of a stereotype. Who are these guys next to you? This is my corner man. This is my corner man. What would it take for you to throw the towel in on her? It ain't. Ain't gonna be no towel. Unless I'm just real bad, I'm telling you. Is that, you. is that what you think too? I'm not gonna throw the towel. <laughs> She's lying there bleeding, twitching, her pulse is fading. You still not gonna throw in the towel? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Do you know uh, who you're going to be fighting? No, I know she's from Mississippi. I, I know nothing about her. Have you had a fight, one of these fights before? Uh, not in the cage, but I have fought in competition you before. You have fought, what's your style? Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, submission fighting. And that's what you're going to be doing? Yes, sir. I trained with Mike Kennedy back in Mississippi. I think it ought to be more women involved. They don't want to get beat up. But uh, I'm a cop, so I'm not scared. Would you get in the ring against a male? Yeah. I get beat, I just get beat. Hey. I get beat on the street every day. Charlie, you must return the beating once in a while. I have. I have. Watch it for the ladies!
now, ladies and gentlemen, the decision. With two seconds left in the bout, winner by submission, Caroline Leonard! Let's hear it for the ladies! That was a tough one! Good bout! So how'd you feel now that it's over with? don't know about it or they just look at it as a masculine sport it's like with any other sport you know you don't see women playing football professionally or baseball professionally uh, for my opponent um, you know you may hear that it's 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 not personal and when it's over and done it's not personal but as soon as we step in the ring it is personal and you're gonna know it and now It's not personal, and when it's over and done, it's not personal, but as soon as we step in the ring, it is personal, and you're going to know it. Stopped by the doctor. Three and a half minutes into the fight, winner by TKO, Rick Thompson! That, as an example of all things through Christ, will strengthen you, and that is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu.
Yeah, good. Oh, okay. Tom, tell everyone how you ended up winning it. It was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's Manimal. Thank you. God's truly, truly blessed me to be here. Uh, that's Manimal style Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Got him down on the ground. I worked the mount. From there, I just worked the short elbows. And I thank you, God. It was enough. Okay. <laughs> really tough guy, really great guy. I uh, thank him for being here also. Very good competitor. I believe in God. I believe in the Lord. I pray every time that when we step in here that he's looking over the fighters. But it is my belief that the Lord does not really care on any one given day as to which fighter is going to win. Yes, I pray every time before I enter the room and enter the ring, before I leave to come to the fight. Um, my dad's a preacher, so uh, I believe in God. And I, I need him in every fight I fight in, so... I take a moment to say a prayer before I fight and never forget God. He's been a real asset in my life. You know, I, I believe he just kind of sits back and says, I might watch over you, but it's going to be up to you to, you know, have the ability, the intestinal fortitude to, 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 to you know, win that fight. That's not the Lord's job. Every time before me and Carl get in the ring, we always say a short prayer for our safety. We, we want to share with you guys tonight. So if everybody not may have the same beliefs as us, uh, you can do it. Right, the fight with Lance, um, I was nervous at first fighting someone who looked as, as intimidating as Lance did, or the Terminator. He was very scary, bald head, blue eyes, ice blue eyes, goatee. He was uh, very scary to anyone, plus he was big, real built. It was my dad's birthday, I didn't want to lose, and they didn't put me against this big old guy, so yeah, I was, I was kind of nervous. This may appear to be a silly question, but do you, do you have any fears going into this tonight? I've hurt my opponent too bad. Man, some men are bred to fight. I mean, that's just natural, it's just in our blood. And for some people in society to try and rise up and say, oh, you're going to get hurt, some of us thrive on that. The guys in here, we all train hard. Pain, that comes with the territory. This is America, it's a free society. If you don't like it, you ain't got to watch it. About to enter the cage, our first combatant will be Lance, the Terminator, Lance! You're all for that. I can't think of anything better. With a ring, you can step out. With a cage, you're locked in there. Two of us are going to walk in, one of us is going to walk out. His opponent, Mike! Everyone tells me, tells me to watch the guy who be quiet, not the one who's always running their mouth. The one who runs their mouth, usually the one that gets beat in the end and the one who sits back, doesn't say much, that's the one you need to worry about usually.
afterwards that his corner had told him that because of my power they did not want him to fight me in the center of the ring was try and use his height and his leverage advantage on me by securing me in that head hold and then backing away into a corner and locking into the cage to uh, try and negate the, the, the strength advantage that, uh, that, they, that they saw. My corner man, Chad Pittman, that said, just hold on, don't let him get you to the ground, keep your back to the fence, because he's a wrestling coach, and he's a cop, so we figured that if I kept my back to the fence, it'd take his strongness away from him. And now, round two! Get your head out! 
Before they go into a match, of course, you have to have that mindset that you're going out there to freaking just destroy this individual. But when it's over and done, you know, you see these two guys are going to be hugging each other. They're going to be talking. They're going to be hanging out probably the rest of the night, winning or loser. Uh, there's a type of, it's almost like a small type of brotherhood you start seeing around each fighter. You know, it really is. There's a bond there. Anybody except for my teammates. She got a restraining order against me actually because I hit her with an egg. It's another one horn production.